What is up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Pack Pride Post Game Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Smith. I am here with Miles Messercola, basketball analyst for Pack Pride. Uh, we are here at, still at the Final Four. We're in our media breakout, too. <laughs> yes, to exactly. Exact, if anyone wants to pull up on us a lot. Yes, I exactly. Guess. And also, uh, side note, um, getting some great lighting for the first time ever. Yep, so. we, we failed upwards with that. I flipped <laughs> the, uh, I didn't even charge my phone, put the power uh, strip on, and uh, now we have light. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And we look nice. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will, we, you know, obviously we're going to discuss NC State's loss uh, here in the Final Four. Um, it's a frustrating loss. You know, you lose to Purdue 63 to 50, but uh, it is a loss in the Final Four. The fact that NC State finished its season in the Final Four uh, after the way things went 17 to 14 into the regular season. I feel like these are all things we've obviously recapped all, you know, all postseason run long, uh, nine straight wins for NC State to even get to this point. Uh, but before we get things started, I want to remind our listeners, as always, visit our iTunes and Google Play Store. Give us a rating if you enjoy the podcast. And also Spotify. We're on YouTube, obviously. If you're watching this on YouTube, do make sure that you uh, do make sure that you you know like and subscribe. Uh, make sure that you jump in and uh, hit get notifications so each and every single time we jump on one of these, you can get those notifications. You can jump in with us. Uh, also, make sure to check out all of Pack Pride's coverage uh, throughout now the basketball offseason and the rest of the football offseason and the baseball season, uh, which we'll pick up coverage a little bit more for here soon. Uh, you can get that for right now 60% off an entire subscription uh, or $1 for the first month. So do make sure that you check that out. That'll run through Tuesday, which we were hoping would run through NC State's Final Four uh, run and, and finish out with the national championship. But uh, we'll be talking about you know all of that. But do make sure you head over to packpride.com to find out more about becoming a premium subscriber. Uh, so, you know, we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're here in Phoenix. We, we are here in Phoenix. I think uh, for one, I know I, don't, I can't speak for you, but I'm grateful that I'm here. Uh, yeah. I was I was coming regardless to not think I'd be able to be, get to be at the game. I was messing with DJ Horn earlier this week. I said I feel like I owed the, the team dinner or something like that <laughs> for it got for me to get to experience this. But this game, there were frustrations within this game because it, NC State felt like they were good enough to win this game. Yeah. So that's kind of where the frustration lies. Um, I thought they executed on the defensive end well. There's a comment right there that says Keats had a perfect game plan. We turned them over 16 times. Yeah, that's completely correct. But when you lose a guy like Mike O'Connell, um, it makes your offense become a self-generation offense. You need guys yep. like DJ Horn, DJ Burns, Jaden Taylor to self-generate offense. DJ Horn did a really, really good job of that. He had 20. It wasn't incredibly efficient. It wasn't necessarily inefficient. He was eight for 21, um, but he provided the offense that they needed. He did his job. DJ Burns did a solid job as well. He was going up against, I mentioned this in the post-game takeaways, like I don't want people to lose sight of the fact that Zach Eady is one of the most dominant players to ever play college basketball. Yeah. Um, he he's seven foot four, 300 pounds. And he, and he can pull out. He's yeah. not, and that's yeah. like the narrative. He's not just seven four. Like we've seen a lot of giants that are not nearly as good as him come in and play this game before. So he deserves a lot of credit for what he did defensively on DJ Burns. Despite, you know, Burns having some moments, um, Taylor had a couple moments, but O'Connell getting hurt, Marcel having a really tough night, that just led to NC State's offense sputtering to 50 points. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of why why we're in the situation that we are. And then the timely shot making for Purdue down the stretch, that one that Braden Smith hit off yeah. kind of after getting Jaden Taylor to play. That was the, the dagger. Over, that, yeah. was the, that was the one where it was over. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it just led – uh, to Purdue going to a national championship game and trying to complete the redemption story just like UVA did five years ago. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the interesting part, uh, you know, uh, Chilton pointed out here, as you as you mentioned earlier, Keats had the perfect game plan, you know, for 16 turnovers. Uh, they just didn't make shots. Yeah, uh, you know, one of the issues with that one was the fact that, uh, you know, NC State forced those 16 turnovers but ended up with only 11 points off of turnovers, whereas mm – -hmm. Uh, Purdue finished with ten. It just felt like there was so many times there where they were able to make that run, they were able to get down to get down the court and just not able to finish. Yeah, uh, and that was that was the frustrating part. Was in the second half, uh, they weren't able to finish those opportunities. And, you know, I mean, I'm looking at the stats here. Like NC State won in bench points, obviously, because you had to have uh, several players come off the bench and produce with with Michael O'Connell going out. Uh, the points of the paint, not that much different. No, Purdue won twenty four to twenty in that category, but. If you told me going into this one that NC State was going to get, you know, say within five, two yeah. possessions in the paint, like yeah. against Zach Eady, against what they were going to, you know, what they're going to throw at them uh, on the defensive end, and they were end up, you know, they still kept it pretty close. Uh, I wanted to talk about individual performance here, though, because as, as frustrating as the loss is and, and things like that, where you're, you're, you know, the season's done. DJ Horn, yeah, obviously came to Raleigh, uh, had one season left, 
Uh, you know, it said he wanted to, to come to Raleigh, win a championship. He does that. Mm -hmm. uh, he won an ACC championship despite the fact they weren't able to win a national championship. Takes NC State, you know, leads NC State as the, the leading scorer for this team to the fourth Final Four in school history, the first since 1983. Uh, 20 points tonight, you know, did shoot, you know, eight of 21, not, not his best shooting performance, two of eight from he three had, point he range. He had to carry the team. He, yeah. He I mean, he understood the task at hand. Yeah, exactly. He had to put up, you know, high volume shots because you weren't going to have that guy that was going to be leading the team, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, running the basketball for or running the offense for them in, in general. Uh, so just your thoughts on, on what he did tonight and, uh, and, and what he did, you know, to his legacy, to the NC State legacy in, in one year at NC State. Yeah, he was the only reason NC State had a chance to win this game. Yeah. They're, they were down seven at the under eight, and that was largely due to what DJ Horn did. Um, and I think if you look at the season that, that NC State just had, like from start to finish, he was the, their most consistent presence. Yeah. Um, in the dog days of it, when they were losing games, and obviously now um, with the, what they did in this, in this nine-game winning streak and ultimately losing to Purdue. His legacy has been cemented as, as one of the truly one of the best players to come through NC State. Like if you yeah. if you look at if you, especially when you weigh team success and the fact that he spearheaded that, um, that like it, he he's a guy that will never, probably never have to buy a drink or meal in Raleigh ever again. Like if I don't think many of these guys will. No, yeah. and, and that's <laughs> and, and that is like a, a big thing for this team. Like they got so close, and I, I mentioned this in post game as well. Like this fan base was. It just wasn't what it, where it needed to be. Yeah, two months ago, like the attendance wasn't good at games. The there was a ton of apathy. I mean, yeah, the narrative around the program was was extremely negative, um, and, and DJ Horn was really the one that rallied the troops and spearheaded this, yeah. especially after not playing in the first ACC tournament game, coming back in, kind of finding his groove, making the big plays down the stretch against Carolina um, to beat them in the ACC tournament, and then all the plays that he made in the NCAA tournament. Um, and for him to come home and do this after the journey that he's had three years in high school, reclass or three schools um, in five years in yep. high school, three schools in five years in college. Illinois State was the only one of the only programs yeah. to take a chance on him. 100%. Yeah. I, I was able to talk to his dad uh, a little bit at, uh, I believe, at practice uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he was basically talking like this, like this is all meant to be like he, yeah. he, was he overlooked? Yeah, maybe. But he went to the right spot where at that yep. time. And, and I feel like college sports now with how, how year to year it is it's basically professional sports but you have to go to class yeah that's what this is yeah um and, and dj horn has adapted to that nc state's adapted to that and they were able to come together and bring something so special for each other that we have not seen since i was uh what as i joked with Derek wittenberg at the holiday invitational when he's like you know i outscored michael jordan i'm like yeah i remember i was negative 14 years old yeah yeah exactly so that's that's what yeah. this is it's, it's truly historic and, and dj dj horn's legacy at nc state is is one of historic nature yeah speaking of that uh dj burns obviously again you know not the night he probably wanted to have tonight eight points you know four of ten shooting but did finish with six or four assists on the night led nc state in that category uh, again with michael o'connell going out um but man uh, you know as as Again, as frustrating as this is to finish this way, to to go out with you know within a loss. I mean, there's only going to be two programs in the country that they're going to go out with you know with a win in in the postseason, and that's whoever played in the NIT and won it, and whoever plays in the NCAA. Well, show and some love to the CBI, man. Yeah, <laughs> the CBI also exists, but the CIT. But let's, but I know I'm joking. Yeah, I'm you're joking. still going to end that season. If, there's only going to be one team that's going to finish the season, you know, with without a loss that that's meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's kind of where, you know, NC State was close to getting there. But uh, for DJ Burns, you know, <laughs> I mean, outside of just the success on the court, you know, probably over 500,000 uh, in NIL oh. the past month. Uh, but, you know, he finishes with a legacy that I think was completely different than if they if they finish with a single loss, a single loss in the ACC tournament. I don't think his legacy is anywhere close to what it is now. No. Because not only what he did charismatically off the court and what he did, you know, from a production standpoint, this season was not going his way. No. Throughout the year either. Um, so what, I mean, just your thoughts on, on what he's finished with and the career that he's had as well. I think if you look at like the DJ Burns story and he, he talked about this in the locker room after, I'm, I'm sure there'll be video up shortly. Yeah. Kind of into the next few hours, but. He, he was done. He was ready to quit playing after he left Tennessee. Yeah. Like, like that's a crazy thing. And he talked about going to Winthrop. 
playing for Coach Prosper, playing for Coach Kelsey, and kind of them rekindling his love for the game and him playing well enough to earn an opportunity to get back to the highest level. And, and I think if you look at what he did last season as, as that complimentary piece to Jarkel and Terquavion, he clearly showed that at the very least he belonged. Yeah. Then this year, there's there's more expectation for him with obviously such a great junior season, and now he's in a situation where the chips are are on, are on him, and mm-hmm. it all falls on him. And he he didn't do great with that throughout the course of the year. DJ Horn emerges. DJ Burns is ready to kind of settle back into the role that he's really comfortable with, and then he found a way to play at an elite 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 level time after. After time, after time, even in the Marquette game where he didn't score a ton, yeah. he had seven assists. He picked them apart. Yeah. Um, and you and people are like, oh, Zach Eady, as we've seen just about yeah. anybody do, yeah. he's held his own defensively in every single game, despite his issues moving laterally. Um, and I think when you look at like the narrative of March Madness, like the fact that this is such a national phenomenon every single year, this is a sport that, you know, frankly, outside of people that are diehard fans, people don't really pay attention to the ins and outs of except for like a five-week period, three yeah. to five-week period. DJ Burns is such an electric and magnetic personality that he gave – he was the face of this run for NC State. Mm-hmm. He embraced being the face of this run for NC State, and he flourished in it. I was going to say, he was, uh, you know, at times – Even, even going Madden. to this, he was the face of March Madness. We called him yeah. America's big man. Yeah. And people – you know, we got vending machine T-shirts. We got <laughs> – we got raising the, canes deals. We got tur- like I'm the like, legend of DJ Burns t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, t- yeah. yeah exactly. DJ, yeah. like all of it. He's, he's he might as well be an accountant. He's got an NIL deal with TurboTax. Like he has become the face of March Madness. When every year we have someone like that, um, and I feel like the the biggest thing that we love about DJ Burns is he is like us. Like he's a man of the people. Yeah, he's a regular guy. He tell like he acts like a regular guy. It's like if one of us was in, immensely talented and had a chance to live out this dream. Yeah. And I, I think the biggest thing that both of the DJs have done throughout this run, and part of this is, you know, they're in their fifth and sixth year of college, respectively, with Hernan, uh, Horn and Burns, is they've lived in the moment. Mm-hmm. They have enjoyed this for what it is, and they've tried to make it last as, as long as they can. And and frankly, like, they, they did everything they could to, to make this run last as long as they can. And I feel like um, they're going to have a special, special place in this fan base's heart forever. And DJ Burns, like Kevin Keats said, he could legitimately be the mayor of Raleigh one day. Yeah. To. Yeah, so. no doubt. And uh, you know, and another guy that uh that had a big game in this one and and we can get into, you know, we'll we'll get into the discussion of, you know, who stays for this team uh down the road. And I I get the feeling, you know, if you were to ask me right before uh the ACC tournament, I'd probably said, you know, and I think I even posted on our boards like there's probably theoretically like three or four guys that are going to probably, you know, look at the portal. Uh they they need to, you know, go out and find guys but i just get the feeling now with a lot of these guys you know they, they've made enough of a, an impact throughout this tournament they've made enough of an impact within the program and and you know within the fan base to get that support back breon pass man like to have him come off the bench he said after the game he's like i knew that i'd have to do it i knew that i'd have to to step up seeing michael o'connell go down you know, knowing that that, that role was going to have to – he's going to have to eat up some minutes at the very yeah. least. He didn't just eat up minutes. He went in. He got two buckets. You know, DJ Horn got another one in between. But he got the one uh, the one floater and then got the transition layup. Uh, and he came in and played some pretty meaningful minutes in the second half too, taking one away from Zach Eady actually at one point. Uh, and then, you know, defensively getting a rebound, things along those lines. Like, your thoughts on, on Breon Pass and, and what tonight did for him moving forward too? He – uh he has been such a good soldier throughout all of this, like through three years, like he probably like in theory, he probably should have left after last season. Yeah. If you were to think about it, obviously like now this run happens and hindsight's 2020, everyone's so glad he stayed, but a kid that has just been through hell through, through his life, losing his father, finding a way to emerge through COVID get recruited when he was Looked at as a football star, yeah. comes in, it's like, nah, I want to play basketball. And, and yeah. he cements himself as a high major player, plays, you know, decent minutes as a freshman, minutes get taken back as a sophomore, you know, doesn't really get a, a great chance this year. But in the postseason, every time they needed him to step up, he did. Yeah. They don't win that Louisville game without him. Yep. Like yep. he hit two threes in the they don't win that Louisville game without and him. And that's because they didn't have DJ Horn in that game. 100%. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he came in and was ready. And, and He's a kid that has just stayed the course. He's been the best teammate. Like Jaden Taylor got emotional talking about him tonight. And for him to come in 
and provide the spark that he did was so 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 impressive yeah um and, and just like as someone that's known him for a while I just felt so proud like yeah. that, that was the biggest thing but um you know you never know what guys are going to do and, and kind of what lies ahead for them what their priorities are what their family needs um but at the same time like he had his chance to, to cement his status as, an, as someone that P nc state fans will remember for a long time and nc yeah. state fans can remember what he did in this game and the fact that he made some plays to keep him in it and give him a chance yeah, and I mean, you know, talking to Brian afterwards, you know, for, for those that don't know, he also lost his grandmother last week yep. uh, before the Sweet 16. Um, so he's been playing with a little bit of a heavy heart, obviously. Uh, and and as you mentioned, you know, lost his father before he ever even came to NC State the year prior to committing to NC State. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been, a, it's been a long journey for him. It was amazing to see him get that moment. Like before this game, he had played three combined minutes in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, caught a dunk though. And got the, yeah, got the dunk at the end of the, was it the Texas Tech, Texas Tech game? Yeah. So he got a dunk at the end of that one, but you know, hadn't, hadn't been able to produce anything up until this point in the NCAA tournament. Uh, so to see him get that kind of moment, despite the fact that, you know, and, and, and you said earlier, like DJ Horn kept them in this game, but like he was, he played a pretty big role yeah, in that in did. the first half too, um, to keep NC State, you know, in, within striking distance there in the first half. Um, and, you know, talking to Casey Morsell after this, and I'll, I'll have a story, um, you know, probably tomorrow morning. I'll work on it tonight. Uh, I want to do a little bit of reflecting before I, I sit down and actually write some stuff. Yeah. I don't want to like just throw stuff out there and, and try to get it, you know, out first. I want to make sure that we get some reflecting before we, we go through this. But talking to Casey Morsell afterwards, I asked him, I said, you know, how did this run change the trajectory of the season? And it's For the program. Oh, the program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the program as a whole. And it's funny because when we sat down and, and me and you sitting next to each other, the last time we did this was in Brooklyn in 2021 huh? after just a historically bad season. Oh, no, 2022 after a historically bad season. Yeah after the way things went that season and we talked about, you know, where's this program heading? What's going to happen next? And this season as a whole, just a remarkably different mm -hmm. uh, conversation that we're having here because that team, he was like, you know, Casey was like, man, my first season, we won four games in conference play. We didn't have a chance. Like they lost out in that first game in, in, in Brooklyn. We discussed, you know, where things were heading, what was going to happen next. And to see where this program is now, to be talking about the disappointment of losing in the Final Four, uh, seems like first world problems compared to where this team was two years ago. Yeah, the last thing I said to Casey as I walked out of the locker room, and I'll tell you guys exactly what it is, word for word, uh, children plug ears. I said, "You left the ship better than you found it." Yeah, and, and and he is a huge reason behind that. And he, you know, he had a, he played he didn't play good tonight, and I feel like he, you yeah. know, he's probably thinking about that right now, so he's probably hurting. Um, but, I, but Casey's such a mature and cerebral guy that he is fully aware of what all just happened. It may, has not, yeah. may have not completely, completely set in, like, truthfully, like, with all the perspective and stuff, but he understands where it was, the steps they took last year with Terquavion, Jarkel, Jack Clark, who I saw someone mention about transfer portal stuff. Yeah. We'll get into that later, or yeah. maybe later in the week. Yeah. Um, like, all those guys, what they did last year, and then this year, when, when, when it was sputtering again, they rallied at the right time, and Casey was a huge reason behind that. Yeah. And, and, a, and a guy that has just embodied what this program wants to be about and has found themselves to actually be about now. Um, and, and he made a, a tough move to go from Virginia to NC State, two different mm -hmm. styles, same league. You're going to get some flack from your fan base. Um, and it did not look good early, but he never wavered. Yeah, He developed his game. He became a more reliable three-point shooter. It kind of dipped this year compared to last, but at the same time became a really complete player, a two-way player. Um, and, it, and is now etched in lore in Raleigh forever as someone that helped this team get to two straight NCAA tournaments and, and helped them get to a, their first Final Four in 41 years. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, you know, frustrating night, as always. Uh, we said, you know, the the loss in general, tough, but Casey Morsell going 0 for 5 in his, in his final game of his college career. I'm sure it's going to be something that's going to sit with him. But, again, like, as, as Evan just pointed out, uh, just remember the block against R.J. Davis like that, you know, putting the <laughs> putting a seatbelt on him, essentially putting the clamps on him, however you want to say it. I was going to a football analogy. That's what they use for, yeah. you know, obviously, for a cornerback. But, yeah, you know, just the yeah, I mean, and and as Mal said here, we would not have done what we did without Casey and his defense. Uh, you know, Jaden Taylor's the same way. You know, mm -hmm. Jaden Taylor, uh, you know, finished with 11 points tonight, four of 10 shooting. There's a couple shots that, you know, he'd probably like to have back yeah. tonight. 
And there was a couple times where you know he went into long offensive lulls throughout his uh, th this past season for him. But you know, the defense from those two, this team wouldn't be where it is without that. Uh, so you'd love to see you know a guy like Jaden Taylor take the next step this offseason. You'd like to see a guy like Mo Tiara you know take the next step this offseason yep. to become you know as consistent as he was throughout this NCAA tournament run, this ACC tournament run, uh, and then you know guys like Ben Middlebrooks likely coming back for NC State next season. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all these guys that we're talking about that have been productive and, and saw their game step up during the postseason, now that's what, what it's about this offseason is rebuilding, getting that team uh, back again, and, you know, adding some new pieces. Absolutely. We already got Brandon Hatley, Hutley, uh, Brandon Huntley Hatfield, yes, sir. Uh, BHH, you if you'd like to, yep. in the mix. He's already committed. Uh, ben, yes, I just said Ben can come back. Ben Middlebrooks can come back next season. Michael O'Connell can come back. Yeah. Um, so Diara, and then obviously you have a, a freshman in Dennis Parker who has, you know, could come back as well. Who Paul McNeil coming in next season too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Dennis Parker. You'd love to have him throughout this postseason run uh, at, you know, at the very least off the bench, contributing yeah. to this team. Uh, and then, as I mentioned uh, earlier, you know, a guy like uh, Jaden Taylor too coming back. What I mean. This obviously changes things in the offseason. They yeah. can go out and recruit a different way. No, uh, any, anyone that, that has the funds to donate to the NIL Collective yeah. that's watching this, write your checks. Yeah. They've earned your money. They've been doing it. Yeah. They've earned your money. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, your thoughts on on how they can take this into the offseason and what they can do moving forward, too? Well, I think it's like any time, you know, and NC State's a little different because it, it in a lot of ways, and I'm not saying this team is a Cinderella, but it was a Cinderella run. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when you see these Cinderella run teams – they get a pop in admissions. They get a pop in, you know, obviously the level of their basketball program. NC State has all the resources to be here all the time. Mm -hmm. Now this has brought the energy and the momentum back to try to sustain it. Look no further than Hillsborough Street tonight. I mean, the the scenes from that street tonight, despite the fact that they weren't able to get it going until uh, eight minutes into the game. But, I mean. And, and so I, I yeah. saw this thing. Bleacher Report did a, a top 50 basketball programs in mm -hmm. the history of the country. NC State was 12th. There's a yep. reason that, you know, this program is is amongst the elite of the elite, the top dozen program in the country, yeah. is because of the history it had. And they finally, despite a lot of issues over the course of the season, have added to that incredible, like, history. And now you have the next month or so to season. Yeah. And, and, and build your roster for next year. You're, you know, there are, I think, six or seven guys that could potentially come back. Say you bring five of those guys back conservatively, mm -hmm. um, and you add obviously McNeil, Trey Parker, um, Huntley Hatfield, and you you can try to add a few more pieces. You give yourself another nucleus of, of new pieces and guys that understand what it took to get to this point already. What I don't want people to to forget is that this team did struggle throughout the year. Yeah. This is a flawed yeah. group, just many of them are. Yeah, but they found a way to get it quick in at the right time. So I, you know, if if the, the media narrative becomes one of which where NC State's a preseason top five team next year, top ten Whoa, team. Yeah, let's. Uh, that's we need to pump the brakes on that. But yeah. at the same time, they have positioned themselves to build sustainable competitiveness over the next few years with a run like this. Um, and that's really all. A lot of times, all coaching staff needs is yeah. it's a little momentum behind their back and and some uh, some excitement around everything they have going on. Yeah, it really feels like right now the the biggest missing piece for this team next year. Is is going out and getting that two guard that you had in DJ Horn? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, right now they've got Brandon Huntley Hatfield. That probably replaces, you know, I'm not going to say it replaces DJ. No, you, DJ so Burns. I, I, but I mean, he's he yeah. said something the other day before you guys got here. They're like, yeah. we're looking at the portal. Like our our coaches, like we need to go find another DJ Burns. There was one guy in the country that you might be able to compare to DJ Burns that entered the portal. And he wasn't and he nearly was, as good of a passer. Not yeah. nearly as good. Good player. Syracuse yeah. got him. He's going to be a lot to deal with next year yeah. in the ACC and Eddie Lampkin in Colorado. But he's like, we're not getting another DJ Burns, man. Yeah. We're not. We need to build a legitimate front court. And I feel like the front court is, at the very least, what is most stable, assuming you bring Diara, Middlebrooks, and Parker back with the addition of Huntley Hatfield. There's four yep. guys. You could play maybe three of them together at times if, if you want to put Dennis Parker at the three. But th that's a really good front court rotation to return next year and gives you a foundation to build upon, especially with, you know, assuming Taylor and O'Connell come back. There's a, a good couple guards to start your backcourt with. Yeah, exactly. And, again, you know, there's there's not – you don't feel like there's a ton that you're missing already uh, based on next year. But, yeah, you love to have, uh, again, the, the progress that you saw from Mo and Ben and, you know, I'd even – 
you know, you saw obviously Jaden Taylor take a bit of a step back in the postseason, uh, but not, you know, from an offensive standpoint, but not from a defensive standpoint. But, but the willingness for a guy that has averaged double figures multiple years in college to be like, I'm fine with playing this role. I'm going I'm to yeah. do it well. And, he, yeah. and there were many games where he provided offense they needed. So I don't think it's anything. It's a doubt that he's capable. It's just refining it and making sure that it's more consistent next year, which, you know, I'm sure he's capable of. Yeah, that and again, you know, Ben Middlebrook stepping up the way he did as well, I think was huge for NC State. Um, let's wrap this thing up because uh, I, I know – they're going to start some uh, – you know, the UConn game is going to wrap up here soon, or UConn and uh, and Alabama. I don't know who, even who's winning right now. We don't have a TV in here. No, my but, phone's over there. So Ah, beautiful. So uh, that, that game's going to wrap up here pretty soon, and we'll – you know, we're going to have to give up this to everybody else. But, uh, you know, let's recap this with just our thoughts on what this does for NC State as a whole yeah because we talked about it last week and it was like this this put this gives nc state a seat at the table yep. this gives you a chance to put your name in there with unc and duke now again that's gonna have to be consistency and it's gonna have to be it like rome can't be built in a day yeah and i don't want anyone to get it twisted despite you know the issues that they may have had this year unc and duke are rome yeah and they still are and, yeah. they, and they will be, but yeah. there's no reason that a school like NC State can't be right there, or at least right there most most of those years. Yeah, and you get the feeling too that this has a chance to. You caught up by about, ten five minutes. Yeah, there years. we go. Yeah. We we had we talked about the fact that you know for NC State this is changing the trajectory of the the team, the the program as a whole. Mm -hmm. To me, it feels like for Kevin Keats to truly move this to truly move this forward. Um, this is going to be a critical offseason because mm -hmm. you've got to try to retain as many coaches as you can because Joel Justice, uh, Kareem Richardson, uh, Levi Watkins, those three guys obviously have made a name for themselves in this Absolutely. run too. Absolutely. Uh, all of the guys that you have on this team, Michael O'Connell has emerged as somebody that people, a lot of people know about. Ben Middlebrooks, Jaden Taylor, um, you know, Mo Diara, all, every, everybody in the program or in the country is going to be like, Hey, I want you to get in the portal. Like, oh, go, go in the portal so and, we can give and, you this. And, and that's what I want fans to understand. Like, like I said, this is every kid in college basketball is on a one-year contract. It yeah. is free agency. It is professional. P R O F E S S I O N A L sports. But you have to go to class. Yeah, that is what this is. Now, I don't want people to judge if someone does jump in the portal because it might happen. And a lot of them are just doing it so they can get leverage to get more money at NC State, yeah, yeah. which is part of this too. So, with that said, this is a critical offseason for NC State. Yeah, you have to retain the guys that helped get you here, and then you can't overreact and panic if they leave. You can't go get guys that yeah. you shouldn't be getting that aren't good enough to play. You have to understand the financial value, what what your resources are kind of treat it like a salary cap mm -hmm. and, and and that's how you have to do it and and we see professional teams give up players that have helped them on magical runs because they can't afford to keep them because it messes with the salary cap yeah that's what this is now it is a business and, and there's a little more loyalty to it because of the college aspect of it but don't get tricked that's what this is so expect the unexpected i'm not I don't, and i don't know anything about anybody but expect the unexpected you just kind of have to at this point yeah well I'll just finish this out by saying, uh, I, you know, you don't want to ever insert yourself into the storyline, but man, yeah. it's uh, it's it's insane to me that you know we're we're here mm -hmm. again. You got the Final Four stuff behind us, drinking our coffee, uh, that has Phoenix on the side of it. For NC State to have accomplished this, for Kevin Keats to have accomplished this, for these players to have accomplished this, there will be at least a minimum of two banners going up next yep. year for NC State. Every single one of these players can come back, take pride in the run that they they put together, take pride in what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, and and as Sam said, you know, thank you guys for all your coverage. I can take pride in what we've done this season. For sure. Because walking in that locker room, having players uh, tell us, you know, we were thankful for you not giving up on us. Yeah. We were thankful for you not throwing us under the bus. We were thankful for you for not, you know, just – starting a negative thread, starting a negative narrative about this team and just waiting to see what takes place because what took place 
was something that I'll never forget. No. Nah. Something that I'll – as much as – I again, I don't want to insert myself into the narrative, but, like, being able to, you know, be a small part of this and being able to bring coverage to people and being able to witness history for NC State. It's history. I mean, yeah. it's a loss tonight, but it's history overall. Yeah. Uh, has been – insane it's something that i will uh man i will i will never forget no nah, i won't either i i uh i have to owe, i owe you a lot for giving me a, a chance with you shoot almost five years ago now mm-hmm. um i have to thank rick lewis for hiring me at phenom i have to thank Webb Wellman <laughs> for everything he's done just giving me an opportunity to kind of make a way in this basketball world and all the other coaches and all the other people that have helped like i, I was talking with uh like i woke up today understanding like the like you know how you just kind of feel the magnitude of what you're about to do? Yeah. Like, I I compared it, and this is a super niche reference. I felt like Ray Bork waking up for game seven of the 0-1 Stanley <laughs> Cup finals. Like, I okay. might not okay. ever, yeah, I yeah. probably won't ever get to do this yeah. again. Yeah. So this is my chance to do it. Might as well, like, do, do it the best I can. Yeah. And live in the moment of it. Like, I haven't really fully come to grips with it yet. As we sit here in the back hallway of State Farm Stadium <laughs> in media room two yeah. uh, with stale coffee and clogged ears and exhaustion yeah Uh, but at the same time i wouldn't want to do it with anybody else for anybody else and it's just been a wild 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 ride yes sir well i appreciate you joining me for this i appreciate uh gotta give a shout out to spencer thomas taking photos on the sidelines for every single one of these games we'll have another photo gallery up for you guys chuck gribble chuck gribble yes (laughs) being here through the entire journey as well from the acc tournament all the way uh to now um, guys, and I can't thank each and every single one of you for uh, for joining us on this ride. Brian Geisinger as well for jumping in with us in each each one of these podcasts. Uh, you know, he he scheduled a trip this weekend for work. I can't believe that. I he, scheduled, uh, here's the funny thing too. I scheduled a weekend trip for work too. I run yeah. a scouting service, and this is the best networking. <laughs> I, I and that's my main source of income. I went to one networking event because I was I, I was here. Like yeah. this is where if you like any time I'm picking this. So yeah. uh, shout out to shout out to this NC State team for uh, helping helping make this all possible because it, it has been a special special ride. Yes, and uh, also as as a few people pointed out too, shout out to Gary Hahn. Uh, I'll, I'll replace them if they if they'll take me. Yeah, yeah. I you know again I'm just will. gonna I'm just gonna say it. You know I would I would absolutely love to see Andrew Sanders be able to take over that role. I don't know who else it would be. Probably if it's not Andrew Sanders, it's probably somebody national that you know Gets or, job, or you yeah. know comes in and takes over that role. But man. You know, there's there's nobody I feel like is more deserving. Nobody I feel like has grinded yeah. more for NC State uh, going to the women's tournament. Which again, shout out to them for yep. for what they put together. You know, again, two nights in a row where NC State season comes to an end. But again, they come to an end in, in the Final Four. They come to an end against you know number one seeds against teams that were deserving of being here as well. They have scholarship players. They were juggernauts they in, in their own right. Yeah. So um, again, unbelievable season, unbelievable postseason. I would say. For, for this NC State team, unbelievable season as a whole uh, for the women's team. But, man, uh, just a, a, a memorable, memorable uh, season to cover all this. But thank you to each and every one of you for joining us. Uh, this will end the uh, the basketball season. Yeah, we'll have a – we'll still have stuff to talk about in oh, yeah. a week or two. Um, By the way, if you're listening, and I don't know if you will, I need to have DJ Horn on the podcast soon because uh, we need to talk about his book as well. Yeah, no, we'll uh, we'll get that we'll get that figured out. We'll get that I was already out. I was already trying to hook it up with his dad yesterday to, to make sure his we dad, get him on. His dad, the one thing his dad said that stuck with me is like, I'm doing every interview. He's yeah, not, oh, yeah, I'm not missing anything. Like, yeah, he did an interview with us, and I'll actually I'll include that in a story too, talking about DJ Horn's legacy and and what he's what he's meant to NC State and what he's meant to the 919 uh, here in the next week too. So. Still plenty of, of basketball coverage, but as far as the podcasts are concerned, the post-game podcast, this will wrap things up. Yep. Pour one out for Gary Hahn tonight, guys. Yes, sir. He gets to – hey, finally gets to take that trip to Cancun. I know. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a good one, guys. Thank you so much for joining